critical evaluation for environmental impact assessment process of major development projects, a discussion for building up Sri Lanka as a center of sustainable development in Asia. This paper is published under the authorship of UAT Udayangani, but it will be presented by Mrs. Ishara Munasinghe, who graduated from University of Colombo with LLB, and she is currently lecturer at the Faculty of Law at the KDU. So can I now call upon Ms. Ishara Munasinghe to present this paper? Good evening, all of you. Before uh, starting my presentation, I would say that, uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson, this, uh, even though this is a certain critical evaluation on environmental impact assessment, this reveals all the legal aspects relating to the topic. Uh, however, it, the things has been uh, placed to this session, uh, and uh, Ms. Udayangan is a colleague of mine at the University of Colombo, and She's unable to attend the session, so on behalf of her, I'm going to present the paper. Uh, right, now study is critical evaluation on environmental impact assessment process, a major development process, a discussion for building up Sri Lanka as a center of sustainable development in Asia. Now, this background to the study, it reveals that uh, after 30 years of war, uh, how the government has taken place on this uh, development process and how it has been uh, initiated with. And uh, particularly, the reason to this be, should be balancing approach towards the environmental issues and mitigating the damages uh, towards the environment um, uh, with the impact of the human behavior. And then the role of environment impact assessment, when we are the university, the environment impact assessment has been taught just uh, as a procedure to follow when you are attending certain uh, license uh, or authoritative uh, authorship for a particular project that you are being done according to the terms of law. And then when you are getting an environmental impact assessment uh, process, it could be a powerful tool to ensure the balance the between uh, the development process and the, uh, it uh, strikes the balance between the rights of the people and the environmental rights as well. And the research problem that my friend has been uh, selected was, this is all relating to environmental impact assessment effectively address the environmental issues of major development projects in Sri Lanka. The objective of the research was, uh, it was discussing the legal base of EIA, it identified the drawbacks of it, and evaluate the effect effectiveness of it, and provide some suggestions for preventing the existing drawbacks. Now, as a, as a crew of expertise in uh, engineering, I don't think that I would be give you a very good definition to EIA. And, uh, but since this has been defined IA, uh, EIA in an uh, advocacy guide to the Asian Development Bank, I, EIA requirement, the EIA is an internationally accepted open learning procedure that identifies that predicts the environmental impacts of an environmentally sensitive new pro development project, that is productive exercise of achieving sustainable development. And uh, once you are undergoing, after you are undergoing a certain IEA process, you will be offered a certificate which would be uh, certain assurance by the government that your uh, particular project or the development uh, aspects would be more secure to the secure, uh, friendly, eco-friendly aspects. The decisions of the EIA is dependent
dependent on many factors. The size and the magnitude of the process and the environment and social sensitivity of the location, the types of activities and the level of public concern, and the scientific and professional judgments, degrees of negative impacts on the social values and the quality of the life, direct or indirect impacts, and etc. Right. Now, understanding the conceptual background of EIA, it plays uh, throughout uh, three places. Uh, when you are starting, when you are looking at it in the legal aspects, these are the principles that we are looking it on. I don't know when you are looking at the engineering aspects, this might be, uh, I don't know, but when it comes to legal aspects, this is the principles that we are being addressed throughout. The protective principle and the preventive principle and participation and decision making. Under the protective principle, it was being assured to protect the environment for future generations and assure safe, helpful, productive, culturally pressured surrounding, and then preserving cultural, historical, natural heritage. It simply it says the protective principle is intergenerational and intragenerational equity principle rights throughout the rights between the parties. And then coming into the preventive principle, it impacts to the environment due to the development process. And then the decision-making process, it obtained the public participation in the Environmental Authority Act. Then the Constitution, the supreme law of the country, does not recognize the right to environment, particularly. I mean, there's no any specific provisions uh, in the Constitution, the Supreme Law of the country, relating to the rights of the environment, you particularly right to environment. But there are some interpretations, judicial interpretations, that have been done by the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka when you refer certain fundamental rights jurisdictions. Uh, it indirectly interprets the right to good, healthy environment and right to environment, but it does no in particular prov straightaway provision. But Article 27 again uh, of the Constitution, uh, it assumed the direct creative principles of governing. States shall protect, preserve, improve the environment for the benefit of the community. But this Article 27 in the Constitution, it cannot be challenged. Because they are supposed to be guidelines, not the particular rights that you are entitled to. Now, according to the research that my friend has uh, taken place, now she has uh, analyzed some of the major development process uh, presently undergone in this country and uh, how the adaptation of EIA process of the, those particular projects. Now, coming into Colombo Southport expansion project, then the EIA concerns, it was carried out uh, in between 2003 and 2005, and then the report was approved by the CCD. Then coming into the Hambantha, the Port Development Authority, she does not have any access to the particular data. Then the development of uh, International Airport of Mattala, it was initially decided to locate prescribed projects, and then the EIA legislation does not have a mechanism to consider the culminative impact to the many projects of the region and consideration of the unreasonable alternatives. For example, Upper Kotmale Dam, the, then again the shortcomings in provisions of public participation. And again with the problems with environmental data, whether it is availability to the public or not, that is a problem. And then inadequate pose of IEA monitoring system. And then the suggestions that she has been made according to her research, the list of prescribed projects should be expanded, its threshold reduced. There should be a mechanism to consider the cumulative impact of uh, multiple projects. The time given to the public participation should be increased from 30 days, particularly from the complex project. The available environment data should be collected by the relevant PPA. The countries such as China, Indonesia, Korea have separate EIA laws, 
But still, Sri Lanka depends on the environmental regulations of EIA. Therefore, it's important to have separate mechanism rather than regulatory body. Thank you.